Good day, this is Mom Sheila again, and today we are going to discuss the different laws of radicals. The first law of radical is the entropy of n is equal to a. So the question is, how does it happen? We will be deriving that law from the different laws of exponent. So if we have the entropy of a raised to n, we are going to write this portion, this portion as rational exponent then we are going to raise it to n if you are going to notice we will be having 1 over n multiplied by n which will become n over n if you have an expression divided by the same expression the answer is always 1 that is why the entropy of a raised to n will become equal to a let us have a few examples. If we have the cube root of 5 raised to the third power, this expression, cube root of 5, will be written as 5 raised to 1 third and then raised to 3. So it will become 1 over 3 multiplied by 3. It will be written as 3 over 3, which is equal to 1. That is why cube root of 5 raised to 3 will become 5. And for number 2, Example, we have square root of 4. We can express 4 as 2 squared, knowing that our index here is 2. So we are going to express 4 with an exponent of 2. So we have 2 squared. We will be having 2 raised to 1 half multiplied by 2. Again, it will become 1. That is why square root of 4 is equal to 2. The point here is, if our index is the same as our exponent, it will become 1. So the answer will be the radicand alone, which is A. Let's have a few more examples. If we have 4th root of 16, we can express 16 as 2 to the 4 because we have... 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. You multiply 2 by itself 4 times. That is equal to 16. And if you have the same index and the same exponent, then the answer will be the radicand itself, which is 2. That is why 4th root of 16 is equal to and then for our last example, for our first law of radical, if you have cube root of 64, 64 can be expressed as 4 cubed because 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. And again, if you have the same index and the same exponent, then the answer will be 4. So we have cube root of 64 is equal to 4. For our second law of radicals, we have n root of AB. It is equal to nth root of A multiplied by the nth root of B. How did we arrive with this? Let us discuss. If we have nth root of AB, it can be written as this one with an exponent of 1. That is why we have here quantity AB raised to 1 over n. Using the law of exponent, if we have quantity AB raised to 1 over N, you are going to distribute the exponent. That's why we have here 1 raised to 1 over N multiplied by B raised to 1 over N. And if we are going to rewrite this expression as radicals, it will become N root of A and also this expression will become N root of B. That is why using the law of exponent, we arrive with the law that the nth root of AB is equal to the nth root of A multiplied by the nth root of B. So if you have square root of 10, it can be written as 10 raised to 1 half. 10 can be factored out by 5 times 2. If we are going to distribute the exponent, we can have 5 raised to 1 half and then 2 raised to 1 half, which can be written as square root of 5 and square root of 2. Meaning to say, square root of 10 is equal to square root of 5 multiplied by the square root of 2. Meaning to say, these two expressions are just the same. Now let us take a look at this too. If we have square root of 9 times 16 and then square root of 9 times square root of 16, you are going to notice that this expression is the square root of the product. You are going to get the square root of the product of these two. And this one is actually the product of the square root. We are going to get the product of this two square root. So again, our best first expression, this is the square root of the product and this one is the product of square root. Which 
which means that these two are the same using our second law of radicals. Let us discuss. If we have the square root of the product, if we are going to get the product, 9 times 16 is, is equal to 144. And as you all know, the square root of 144 is 12. But if we are going to use this one, the product of the square root, wherein the square root of 9 is 3 and the square root of 16 is 4. So if we multiply 3 times 4, again, it will also lead to 12. So meaning to say the square root of 9 times 16 is equal to the square root of 9 multiplied by the square root of 16. And you can see here that it will arrive with the same answer. That is our second law of exponent. So if we have our next example, if you have square root of 8, alam nyo naman that 8 is not a perfect square. But we can express a square root of 8 as square root of 4 multiplied by the square root of 2. And as you all know, the square root of 4 is 2. That is why square root of 8 is equal to 2 square root of 2. Again, where did we get 2 here? Yes, galing siya dito. We have the square root of 4. So using our second law of radicals, square root of 8 will be equal to 2 square root of 2. For our third law of radical, we have here n root of a over b, that would be equal to n root of a over n root of b. Following again the law of exponent, how did we arrive with this law of radicals? If you have n root of a over b, we can express it as radical exponent, so it will become quantity ab raised to 1 over n. And then using the law of exponent, you are going to distribute our 1 over n exponent to our numerator a and denominator b. So we will be having a raised to 1 over n and b raised to 1 over n. And this expression a raised to 1 over n can be written as n root of a and then b raised to 1 over n can be written as n root of b. Doon natin kinuha ang ating third law of radicals wherein the n root of a over b is equal to the n root of a over n root of b. So for example, we have cube root of 2 over 5. It will be written as 2 over 5 raised to 1 third. You are going to distribute our exponent. So we have 2 raised to 1 third over 5 raised to 1 third. Then express it as radicals. That is why cube root of 2 over 5 will be equal to cube root of 2 over cube root of 5. Just like what we have here. Now, let us prove further our law of radicals number 3. Let us consider the square root of 225 over 25 and square root of 225 over square root of 25. In here, we are going to get the square root of the quotient, but in here, we are going to get the quotient of the square root. If we get the square root of the quotient, if we get the quotient, 2 to 5 divided by 25, that will give us 9. And as you all know, the square root of 9 is 3. So we have the square root of 2 to 5 over 25 is 3. But if we have here quotient of square root, we have the square root of 225, that is 15, and the square root of 25 is 5. And if we divide 15 divided by 5, it is equal to 3. So we have proven that the square root of 225 over 25 is equal to the square root of 225 over the square root of 25, which is actually equal to 3. So, if we have square root of 4 over 9, as you all know, 4 is not divisible by 9. So, how are we going to simplify it? We are going to law this, we are going to use rather this law of radicals. We are going to write square root of 4 over 9 as square root of 4 over square root of 9. And if we simplify, square root of 4 is 2 and the square root of 9 is 3. So, square root of 4 over 9 is equal to 2 over 3. 
in the same manner, if we have square root of 144 over 9, we can write it as square root of 144 divided by square root of 9. Square root of 144 is 12 and the square root of 9 is 3. And 12 divided by 3 is actually 4. But if we are going to divide 144 divided by 9, that would be equal to 16. And if you get the square root of 16, yes, you are going to arrive with the same answer, which is equal to 4. And that is our law of radicals number 3. So this is the last law of radicals, law of radical number 4. We have here m truth of n truth of a is equal to m n truth of a is equal to n truth of m truth of a. Anong ginawa natin dito? For the, from the first one, m truth of n truth of a it is equal to m n truth of a. We actually multiply our indices. So we have here m n truth of a. And for the last one, what did we do is we just interchange our indices. Kaya naging n truth of m truth of a. We can, as an example, if we have cube root of fifth root of 2, we can write it or it is equal to fifth root. 15th root of 2, we just multiply 3 and 5, so we have 15th root of 2, and it is also equal or can be written as 5th root of cube root of 2. We just interchange the indices 3 and 2. Now, let us prove our law of radicals number 4. If we have, for example, the square root of cube root of 64, this is our original given, the square root of cube root of 64, we can multiply our indices. As you all know, we have an invisible index of 2 here. So if we multiply the two indices, that will become 6. So it can be written as 6th root of 64. 64 can be expressed as 2 raised to 6 because you have 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 that is equal to 64 you have equal index and exponent that is why the answer here is 2 and for example we are going to write it in this manner anong ginawa natin we just interchange our indices, yung index na 2 nasa loob na, the index 3 nasa labas na. So if we have cube root of square root of 64, it will become cube root of 8. Where did we get 68? Yes, galing siya sa square root of 64. And the cube root of 8 is 2 because 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2 is equal to 8. So the answer here is 2. You are going to notice that whether you multiply your indices or you interchange the indices, you are going to arrive with the same answer. And that is our law of radicals number 4. So if we have cube root of the square root of 27 the first thing that we can do is we have we can multiply our indices it will become sixth root of 27 but the problem is you cannot express our radicand 27 as expression with an exponent of 6 so we cannot use that one so instead of multiplying the indices pwede natin gawin tong isa we are going to interchange the indices so it will become the square root of the cube root of 27 we're in cube root of 27 that is equal to 3 so if you simplify cube root of the square root of 27 its simplest form or it will become the square root of 3 if we have 6 root of 4, it is expressed as this, uh, the product of the indices. So the factors of 6 are only 3 and 2. So we can have cube root of the square root of 4 or we can have the square root of the cube root of 4. Now we are going to consider our index 4. And as you all know, 4 is a perfect square. So we have to write it as the cube root of the square root of 4. So again, our index here here is 2 and if you multiply 2 times 3 that is equal to 6 and if we simplify further magkakaroon tayo or it will become cube root of 2 again these are the different laws of radicals number 1 and truth of a oh, raised to n is equal to a and truth of a b is equal to n truth of a multiplied by n truth of b n root of a over b is equal to n root of a over n root of b. 
and m truth of n truth of a is equal to m n truth of a and is equal to n truth of m truth of a. Those are the different laws. I hope you understand. Thank you for watching.